What's up, fans, friends, and followers all over the world? I'm Gerard Scarpacy, co-founder of the Airbrain community. We've been in Las Vegas this whole weekend for the IBS Las Vegas. Super, super excited. We're at the Cote Hair Salon Studio. This place is out of control. Incredible studio here with one of my oldest friends, a buddy that I know for a very long time. I'm going to get into some of the history there, Mr. Ira Pope Sage. What's up, Ira? Uh, like Ira's already in his haircut. This is his beautiful model, Missy. Say hi, Missy. Hey. Missy works here at Cote Hair as one of the customer service uh, representatives. I think that's how you put it. Yeah. So, Ira, I can see you're already in there doing a little bit of your magic stroking. Tell us about that. So about the technique itself, as far as the stroking, going through and hitting the finger open, closing the way out, hitting the finger open, closing the way out, hitting the finger open, shaking is really good, helps it. Yeah, it's just a little vibrato never yeah. hurt. But uh, what I'm going to do as far as the technique of this haircut is... Vibrato is Gerard. Is think about the head as a clock. Think about the nose as 12 o'clock, the right ear is 3 o'clock, back foot is 6 o'clock, left ear at 9 o'clock. And those are the primary hours. Between those primary hours, we have the secondary hours. The secondary hours corners of us too. So between 12 and 3 this is the front right corner of 1.30. Between 3 and 6 was the back right corner of 4.30. Between 6 and 9 was the back left corner of 7.30 and then 10.30. The but, so you have a whole clock theory based around the head shape and the movement of the body yeah. and the weight. So this is kind of your technical theory. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this stroking technique that you use. Like when do you use it? What's the benefit? I mean I know some people do it. I see a lot of Japanese hairdressers and uh, but I don't think it's that common. So break down the technique and why you use it. So I use it because of the fact that I want the hair to be kind of like a hand. A hand to me is very functional. It's moving back the space between the fingers. So I want that space between the fingers. Talk nice and loud, Ira. So oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, pump it out. Pump it out. So, so like you're at a concert. That fit, space between the fingers was options. We didn't have space between our fingers. We could no longer cut hair with scissors. We can no longer clean our nose. <laughs> or we can no longer let that person know we don't want to wait their driving. Hey, so, I'm going to go. So the thing is you get option and function. So that's the same thing I'm trying to install into the hair. It's movement, option, and function. Right. Movement, option, and function using the stroking technique. So you did a big change here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she was, a lot of hair coming yeah, up. She I was, didn't uh, know if you do a trim or a big change. Yeah, but. I decided to go for it today a little bit. Awesome. Um, so I went through and did pre-cut out of the um, factor of time. I did pre-cut this bottom area. Um, and now I'm just going to work up this top area. Everything is going to be cut the secondary hour of 4.30 back here. There's so that means everything, you've got like a guideline there and everything's all directed back to it. Right. So, so I'm that, trying to understand that. You know, everybody's got a different lingo, which I love. We were just with our friends from Alabama and they have their own language. I would definitely have own language, not just about haircutting, but I think just about everything in the world. This guy's mm -hmm. got an innovative way of speaking and presenting himself. So you put in a guideline, you set at 4.30? Yes. And everything's coming back. So. Uh, it's a clock. Is this would this then be twelve? This the front is twelve. Twelve so is the 12 front. Clock. Twelve. Three o'clock. Three. Six. Got it. And nine. So got it. just like that situation clockwise. Got it. Got yeah. it. And a clock that's laying on the floor facing upward. And what does the thirty mean? It's in between the the, the hours. Yeah, exactly. It's in between so right the hours. Corner. So obviously, got it. If it was pure on the hour, it wouldn't be in that exact access point. Got it. Awesome. So we, we got, got it. Of our friends joining us, Maria Lantos, who's going to be on stage with you at Teachin. Yes, Teachin. Building community, like everyone that's in Teachin, from Marina to Chelsea to Ira to Sal Missouri, they've all been messaging each other on Instagram. I think that's amazing. Most of you guys could be meeting and working together for yeah. the first time exactly. on July 10th at the Teachin, the morning after Naha. Super psyched to have Ira. He brings a unique kind of flavor in every way. Kind of everything that he does, but especially to his hair. I watch some of these Facebook lives. Yeah. I see these people do this all the time. Hey, Danielle. Let's make myself a really call Let's just put it in perspective. <laughs> Actually, James, come over here for a minute. We got a great audience coming. Turn around for a second. Show all the cool. The whole community came out. Let's put things in perspective here. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Hello. 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 Let's put this in perspective here. <laughs> so, you know, like, guys, guys, you can control. All right, we're having too much fun. Let's get back to the hair. All right. Here. People want to learn something. So, it is pivoting basically. Everything's pivoting right from this top spot, by the way. 430? Right, right here, yes, 430 at the top here. It was straight down, and then it's slightly diagonal forward, slightly diagonal forward, slightly diagonal forward, and all pivoting right up this very spot. And this whole haircut will pivot right off of here. So therefore, this 4.30 hour will be the shortest time zone, yeah? And I know it's not time to cut if I'm not at 4.30. Also, elevation, being another component and ingredient in cutting hair, 
I choose to work with the, um, an elevation I talk more time in the day. So in this situation, I look at in the morning time, I'm very tired, generally I love sleeping, mm -hmm. and in the morning time, I'm more tired until about noon in the day. And right around noon is when I start to wake up. So in this situation, I'm pulling everything below noon. Noon to me is parallel to the floor and the ceiling. That's right at noon. If I'm below noon, I'm heavier, I'm building up weight, I'm in graduation, graduation land. If I'm above noon, I'm reducing weight, I'm up in layer land. Yeah? So right at noon is the spot where I tend to wake up. So that's where I'm... So I, I just love how you made this your own. I mean, I, I've known Ira now uh, probably at least 20 years from back in the Paul Mitchell days. I did some time with Paul Mitchell and um, I was, was one of the artists and I remember connecting with him right away on stage. But I, what I love about this guy is he had his own way which is great, and now you can, I don't think I've ever heard anyone explain it that way, and that's just super cool. I'm gonna ask everybody that's watching, guys, if you enjoy what we do, you appreciate hair. Guess what time guys, it is, audience. Hit the share button right <laughs> here. If you guys go, well, jump on, hit the share button. We wanna make sure as many people as possible get to see this incredible education with this unique young man. I guess you're not so young anymore. I, yeah, I guess yeah, not. we were just saying we're at the IBS show over the weekend, and we kind of looked around, and we were like, hey, wait a minute, which I think, we're, this, we're the old guys yeah. now. We're like, wait a minute, how did that happen? All right, so stroking. For those of you who are just joining us, Ira kind of specializes in this technique, or it's one of his, you know, in his repertoire. Yeah, so go over that again, because I know a lot of people are just tuning in, and the actual method of cutting. Is it kind of like razor cutting, or what? Like, yeah. What's up, Dana Fraze? Hello. Uh, hey, Ira. Uh, so it's definitely very similar to, or to razor cutting. Right, the way that I kind of stroke. Edge. Yeah. yeah. Taking away and tapering that end. Yeah. With a razor, you can get more of this edge, though. Say, this is my hair straight, you get more of this edge. Yeah. And let me let me see it from this side. A pencil then. A pencil so then. Exactly, I got two so she got the two blades. Exactly. Sure, sure, sure. So sure. Um, for me, I get just a little bit more of a sharper edge for what I'm looking for. Awesome. And I'm more comfortable with my hands with scissors. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And with that one trick, if there's anything in there. Yeah, walk us through this whole section. Yeah, yeah can you tell us Before about your. Before I go to the section, so we're talking about the technique, yeah, I'm going to show that one factor. Um, so generally when we cut hair, for the most part, we work with straight fingers. Yeah. Um, other than with a razor. Yeah. Much like a razor, a slight little bend in the finger. Sure. And that's the one little trick, if there's any trick to it, is that that soft little bend to it. Right. And then take this smooth piece of metal and connect it on that first knuckle. Get it on that first knuckle, and you say you can open and close it. Let me get a little closer here now. I can yeah, open and close it all I like. If my fingers are too straight, if I open and close that scissor, Eek. I'm going to cut a curve in my finger. No. Yeah, this would be a little broke back, not so hetero. Just hit it on there, open, close the way down. Hit it on there, open, close the way down. So this is just actually flipping a little bit as you're doing it. It's a very feminine yeah. move. There's yeah. art, there's curves to yeah. it. It's not masculine and linear. Yeah. Very feminine. Do you flip it and reverse it? We had somebody yeah. comment before. Yeah, we'll do it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Reverse it. Awesome. But, huh? All right, so let's really walk through a whole section now. Okay. So, so curve over direct, let's see if I got it, because if I got it. Let's drop that section and start from the beginning. Okay. Again, we're going to pivot right from this top point here. And by having this diagonal forward section, I'm building up more weight. You can see that uh, Missy's here is a little bit skinnier. So I want to build up a little bit more weight to it. So I'm doing diagonal forward sections. If her hair is super thick and I wanted to layer and reduce more weight, I would do diagonal back sections and pull it back here. That's where I put my finger on, flip it in reverse. <laughs> but in this situation, I'm doing more classic in that, in, in that situation where I am going diagonal forward. I'm going right off that there. So diagonal forward section there. Right on back. Being this is all a stationary cutting line, I could have chosen to take this all in one. Um, but I do, uh, it's my first time cutting Mrs. Hair, it's my first day here, so I want to be very respectful of her hair, get to know it, and uh, I don't need to rush through today. A lot of love coming in. Our buddy Mario says Rocket. Todd Allen is a big fan of yours, loves Ira. And Cote Hair Robin says Ira is the bomb with, of course, green G's. Because that's your Cote hair. We'll talk a little bit about this space and Cote hair in a minute. Our old friend Rick Jaramillo says, what up, G? Michael Walter uh, Snyder, get it, Ira. Alex is watching, our good friend back in New York. Lots of love coming in. Wendy Wortham loves how the cut's turning out already. Okay, we've got a question from Marina Lantos, who's going to be joining us at the teach-in on July 10th with Ira. Uh, she wants to know, does Ira recommend flat ironing hair before doing this technique, or as long as it's just generally straight? It really depends on what your finish is going to be um, and what the texture is beforehand and how well it flows out, basically. 
Uh, I did choose to go ahead and put a smoothing iron over her hair. Her hair, um, even though it's skinnier, it likes to be fuzzy. It's been a long time. You can see on these ends. Ooh, it's been a long girl, time. those ends. Um, so I'm really excited uh, smooth as Are you excited possible. about the change? <laughs> yeah, you're ready for it. Yeah, you got the man right here. Uh, uh, we have a question from Alex, our good buddy Alex, uh, back in New York. She wants to know if you also do this sometimes on wet hair, or is it always on dry hair? You know, I do on wet hair as well. I prefer and recommend dry hair. The um, reason being is that the dry hair is a lot... It's dry, so it's, like, it's a different fabric, basically. Wet hair is very soft and flexible and slippery, basically. Right. So generally, do your stroking on dry hair? Yep. All right, so as Ira you know, continues with this stroking technique, it's all being over-directed back to a stationary right. point and just kind of graduating it from the underneath, stroking yep. it through. Make sure that my elevation is all below noon. Below noon. Yeah, sitting here right here at the four. I three. love that. We'll get into that language again because a ton of people just joined. We're just skyrocketing. Thank you, everyone, for sharing, everyone here and everyone watching. Um, we're at the Cote Hair kind of headquarters. It's pretty amazing. I didn't know what to expect. I've known Butch for many, many years, and guy's always been a cool entrepreneur doing different things. And, you know, we said, Ira, we want to get you on uh, Facebook Live. So he said, why don't you come by Cote, the headquarters here. Come on in here, Butch. Again, another guy I've probably known close to 20 years from back in the early days uh, when you said your clothing no, line. I'm still young now. Yeah, I know. I'm old, but very young. So tell us about this space and like what happens here. You know, it's got a photo studio, you've got a salon. It just took me through the warehouse and where they've got package their own stuff, which is just kind of mind-blowing. I mean, come on in here. <laughs> tell us about it. What, what, what happened? So we're a couple of hairdressers that uh, saw a lot of opportunity to create an uh, exclusive hairline for salons. Based on performance, performing part of our plans and education. And uh, this is our incubator where we uh, we do filming all of our videos on our website, education, from cutting, coloring, styling, and then we have our photo studio area on the other side. And this is where we develop new products and all that fun stuff. Awesome. How many products you got on the line now? What's, what's oh, happening? Hey, you, you were just telling me now you're in the three countries? Three countries. And you guys have a tool line too, orange, yeah. blow dryers, brushes. Yeah. Amazing. You make it all. Everybody out there, this is what you want to be. You want to be a real hairdresser, passionate about what you do, and you want to put that message out there, make your own brand, do it. Because I know if these guys can do it, we can all do it. Just do it with passion or don't do it at all. Why not, Butch? Thanks for hosting us. Enjoy Ira. Yeah, let's get back into the technique. So now I'm working on over to the nine o'clock side, basically. Um, again, bringing everything slightly diagonal forward, slightly diagonal forward. It will pivot, pivot, pivot all of this same spot up here at the top and work its way right up back to 430. Again, it's not time to cut until you're at 430. I love the simplicity of it. You know, you're getting a really kind of edgy, fun technique in a really simple way, which I love. It seems like it would be salon friendly. You know, once you get the method down of actually controlling the scissor, which we'll keep talking about, because tons of people have just joined. Let's kind of review your, your, your clock method, which I think is cool. So you start it at the front, and you say that's 12 o'clock, and then it pivots around the head, so the center back of the head would be six. Yep, so when you're over here- Gerard, you didn't sound so sure about that. No, I'm- I'm with you, it's a different deal. So now you're coming to the second side, and you're gonna be, where's you gonna, where are you gonna set that guideline? I'm just gonna put it it's already over, set in here over at 4.30. So again, I'm just coming right on back over to 4.30. So it is one of those haircuts if you have a very small bladder, it's very friendly. You can go pee as much as you want. My yeah. friend Amber has the smallest blood I've ever met. And uh, before um, you begin this section, though, do you mind just showing us again, like where you started your last section to how you took your sure, so next section, going first, to nine o'clock? I think you said. Um, I cut this right in the secondary hour four thirty. So basically, right. if you look at where this back corner meets right here, right, that's where I cut everything out. Okay. It's all cut right here at four thirty. Yep. So everything will be cut right here at four thirty with a with a slight graduation because it's all elevated with low noon. I'm slightly building up weight again because she's got a right. senior fabric. Now there's some undercut in there. You did you pre-do a little I undercutting? Did. I did do a little pre So you just kind of knocked that oh, out of the box. Yes. Just to kind of give her a little something. Yeah. And generally in this kind of situation, once I went longer over here, I would have gone here for the higher spot, but I decided, yeah, I'm gonna try something different and keep it over here. Is it gonna be a little asymmetric? If yes, everything goes to four thirty, all right, I'm getting the yeah. method. Look right at you go, Gerard. Yeah. Yeah. What you'll see on this is it will be 
Shortest here at 4.30, longer towards 12 on the 3 o'clock side, yep. and longer even on the 9 o'clock side because there's further time travel. Awesome. You're traveling through For time. Hey, guys. Got it. Great to be live number 75 with Gerard Scarpese doing stroking. Yeah. Yeah. Introducing you to the clock oh, method. And if you want to book a class on the clock method, you can book <laughs> Hey, baby. You know, imitation you just, is the yeah. sincerest form of flattery. I appreciate that. Thanks. Right Gerard, on. you did take uh, inspiration off of Tracy's haircut last night. I did. I think it, I'm the luckiest hairdresser in the world. Who gets to do what I do? I get to find great hairdressers, hang out with them while they do hair, and learn every, almost every day. So that's what it's all about. All right, so coming into the second side. Walk us through stroking again, because lots of people are joining almost every minute here. Cool, let me get this next section then. Okay, so I'm pivot right off that, I go forward, take this up out the way, over. Come on, it'll be nice to you. Come on over. Going back to 430. Yeah, all the way back to 430. So you've got a stationary, using stationary some older guide. terminology, yeah. it's like a stationary guide, stationary and guide you're over-directing guide. everything back to that one point. You got it. You've got an stationary undercut, guide. which brings out the head shape, and then you do some of your stroking magic. Make sure that everything's below noon. Letting that guide drop. That's the nice thing about dry hair slash with stroking, is I can see that guide drop. So I end up having like a big flat man's voice, and I'm in good hands with Allstate. <laughs> very friendly scenario for me that would have yep. extra insurance. So like you don't have like with wet hair and precision cutting, the guide's not like stuck to the hair. You kind of see it drop away and you visually, so you, you know, it's like more of a reference than a true guide. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And uh, you know, I noticed you're able to control that hair all the way from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. you, have any, you know, and obviously you don't, being, you know, petite gentleman, you don't have gigantic hands. And a lot of times people... Yeah, <laughs> a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't have big hands, so I'm going to do that much hair. So any tips on how to control that? Um, on that kind of situation, I'm still working at, I'm thinking about LA and coming to all these guys over here. I'm still looking at the roots. I'm still making sure the root is always still below noon. So I'm just being quite aware of where my root's at and where I'm at in relationship to where I'm, where I'm cutting at the same point. So no matter where I'm at, I'm making so you're kind of moving, yeah, you're not, because since it's not static, you're moving as you're cutting, right? right? In this situation, I'm not really moving too far up, because again, I want to keep everything below you. Right, you it's kind of a graduated silhouette, what that's you're doing there, an A-line graduated silhouette. A lot of love coming in, you're blowing up here, you're going viral, you got about 600 live viewers at the moment, Thank which you. is amazing. So that means every second, you know, calculate, so every second there's about 600 people watching you, so no pressure, Ira. Right. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of love, Vincenzo uh, sending his love. My, my dude, love you, Ira, you're the best, or you're a beast, actually. We'd love to have Ira cut my hair, that's Jenny Nam. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. So, Ira, mm -hmm. are you excited for teaching? I'm very excited for teaching. Yeah? yeah. So for anyone that's watching that doesn't know, Hairbrain, what we do, we do this, we get all our friends together, and we do like a master jam at industry events. The next big one we call teaching, the next big master jam that we're doing, it's the morning after Naha. So if anyone's coming to Naha, don't leave first thing Monday morning, stay at least till 2 or 3, because from 11 to 1 p.m., we have a beautiful stage provided by the Professional Beauty Association. And at this point, we're almost like over full with hairdressers. I think we have about 15 different hairdressers that are going to jam. So we just keep jamming, sharing, teaching. Um, tickets are only $55, and they're available at hairbrain.pro, and I can promise you it'll be the most informative two to three hours with some of the most incredible hairdressers, from Sharon Blaine to Ira to Tracy Sakasic from Sassoon, Marina Lantos, Chelsea Von James, uh, our great buddy from Northern Ireland, Paul Stafford, and a lot of diversity, a lot of diversity. We're going to have makeup this year with Janelle Deason, who's one of the most incredible makeup artists. Let's get back to the technique. So again with it, I'm hitting the finger open, closing the way up. Hitting the finger open, closing the way up. Should create a nice little space in there. Um, and I'm looking for them to be kind of like piano fingers, the exact opposite of mine. Um, so really like a lot of space and a lot of movement in there. So, again, so kind of like with any section, there's a graduation and a length, a graduation and a length as the scissor goes back and forth. Uh, sorts, I guess. It's, it's, I'm texturizing the edges, kind of like you, again, like you with the razor, because yeah. it's not just all marched in it's there. Not Right. Or or something. Yep. Um, there's space in there, so they can't actually march free like that. Should we turn around? Whatever you like. Yeah, let's turn around this way, Kelly. I think you'll get better images. Yep. Like it's, not, it's a little tight on that. Yeah, right. It's actually a super cool studio built into the Cote headquarters here with a psych wall, so just turn it around. Thanks, Rod. Again, Danielle Green, our great friend. We got to hang out with her today in person. Uh, she lives here in Las Vegas. This is Radically Curly. What's up, Danielle? Thanks for sharing and joining. Andrea Maharajpo, 
Coach is watching from Gerard. Australia. She says, excellent skill. Uh, Barbara says, you shred that puppy. All right, thanks. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Mark and Lisa, everybody, <laughs> Vilma Subal, we can't wait to see you, Vilma. Uh, we saw Danielle today, we were chatting about you. Vilma's another incredible, passionate hairdresser. She's bringing some of her team all the way out here. Lots of love coming in. Uh, Raquel says, very pretty. Uh, Ashley Mercer is asking friends to watch. All right, let's get back to the technique, Ara. Cool. So again, everything is being over-directed back to 4.30, secondary hour 4.30. Um, it's not time to cut. Hey, Lupe. Hi, Lupe. Lupe's going to be a teaching too. It is that my elevation is below news. I'm slightly below the graduation. Making sure I always have a relationship with my guy. We're here at 4.30. I can slightly down my finger. I don't think that drop. Or she drops. I can then come in here and stroke, stroke, stroke. So, I don't know how long have you been cutting hair? Because I know we've known each other probably close to 20 or 18 years. How long have you been cutting hair? I started cutting hair when I was 13. I've been in salons cutting hair since 1995. Right on. So, and, you know, how did you get your start? You know, because, I mean, people don't start creating their own language and their own way of cutting hair. How did you start off with, with the craft? With cutting hair in general? Yeah, in the craft. You know, I mean, once you, you got kind of got licensed and that whole deal. I don't think you had a license at 13, right? No, I did not. Yeah. So, um, I grew up in a small town called Greenville, Michigan. Greenville? Greenville. Oh, Greenville. Greenville. I was going to say, that's pretty cool. Greenville. Oh, I'm from Greenville. <laughs> nope. Um, all Greenville's there, actually. Um, but anyway, uh, so I grew up there, and I was the kid that would, back in the 80s, I was into this uh, skater look, super white kid look, and it was kind of emo looking, and on the part was spiky. And I had a super thick head of hair back then. And uh, um, so then uh, uh, I'd go to the salon and have a very pretty girl do it, and a pretty girl would never make it quite the way I liked it. And a pretty girl asked me if I liked what they did, and I smiled on and said, yes, pretty girl. Um, and I'd go home and cut into it myself and make it work for me. And after about three times of doing that, I decided to start cutting hair myself. And then I started to go into more that white kid look, into more ethnic looks, into Bobby Brown Gumby haircuts and Johnny Hill Bi level haircuts and graphics. Um, I got known to do my own hair. I started doing my friend's hair at 14. A salon owner named Jeff Hall asked me sophomore year at a gas station with my girlfriend if I was going to become a hairdresser. Um, and I said, I don't know. I'm really into just sports and girls at this point, at this point in my life. And I wanted to be a lawyer, but then uh, uh, you would have made a good lawyer. Awesome, you, you got the gift of gab. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You would have made yeah. a good lawyer, into sports lawyer, entertainment lawyer, right? Yeah. Show yeah. me the money. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so then, uh, um, then uh, uh, my junior year, um, I had to, between my junior and senior year, I had to decide if I was going to um, play football and have fun like I wanted to, or run cross country and get a scholarship to possibly be a lawyer because of the fact that. Uh, between my house and the next, or between my lake and the next lake, there was a beautiful house, and they were both it was owned by lawyers, um, with Porsche and all this stuff that I, the lifestyle that I was looking for. So, um, but then my, uh, I started cross country two weeks after starting cross country. Then I took my buddy home from football practice. We stopped at the stoplight, and somehow for the first time ever, I saw this house, and gorgeous house, gorgeous boat, two cars. And I was like, oh, look at that house. And he says, oh, that's Jeff, Hall, Jeff Hall's house. I'm like, wait a second, the hairdresser? And he's like, yeah. You're like the lawyers, and then you're there like the hairdresser. There I go. So it was easy right there. Awesome. I knew that I was going to uh, quit cross country, play football, and have fun for the rest of my life and be a hairdresser. Awesome inspiration. Yeah, I mean, there's so many successful hairdressers. And if you do this long enough, if you run in the right circles, you meet so many people who realize sure. their dreams. Like Butch here with this incredible facility. It's amazing, amazing. We're going to turn you around a little bit, Ira. So we get... Get another look here. And again, tons of people are joining. Just shot up to about 800 live viewers per second. So I'm sure a lot of people are hey, Sarah. looking for a review of the technique here for Missy. Big transformation happening for Missy. Why don't you review it and, and show us the next steps? So again, as far as the looking at the head o'clock, you know, the nose is 12 o'clock, right ear is 3 o'clock, back for a gray 6 o'clock, left ear 9 o'clock. Secondary hour is in the middle, between 12 and 3, let's go on 30. Back right corner, 4.30, 7.30, and 10.30. Those are the secondary hours. I'm cutting everything back here at 4.30. So therefore, it's going to be shorter at 4.30, a little longer towards 12 on the 3 o'clock side, and even longer towards 12 on the 9 o'clock side, because I have further time travel. My elevation is below noon, noon being parallel to the floor and the ceiling. If it's below noon, you're building up weight and graduation land. If it's above noon, you're reducing weight up to the layer land. She's got skinnier fabric, so I'm keeping everything Below noon to slightly build up weight. 
All right, so this thought process of the, you know, the day and the, and the night and the clock, is this how you think about every haircut? Is this how your kind of mind works when you're doing it? For me it is, yeah. Um, this is something that, the whole reason I put this together um, is the fact that uh, um, I was in Italy doing a hair show and the girlfriend at the time was there with me and she was a model for the show and there were Italian girls, Russian girls, German girls, French girls, and then my English speaking girlfriend. And so they're speaking all these different languages. They were doing a ballet scene, and the ballet instructor said pirouette. They all just did the same move. I said, like, ah, it's so amazing. I wish we had six hairdressers, hair cutters. Mm. And we have one common dialogue. I realized it's way too many years past the time that we don't have that. So instead of, I can't beat that, I can only join it. So I created my own. I try to keep it very visual, simple. When I speak, I don't want you to only hear me. I hope that you can visually see me. You guys are close enough, you might be able to smell me when I speak. Yeah, we definitely um, can. So there's sensories that I'm looking to try to touch as much as possible. Yeah. So just a review for Luisa Navarro. When Ira talks about the clock, he just it's how he distributes the sections around the head. So he thinks about the nose or the front of the face at 12, the center back at 6 p.m., and then he thinks in a circular motion, almost like a sundial. And then he thinks about basically his over direction, he picks a point. In this case, everything was over directed to 430, and then he used this incredible stroking technique. Lots of people are asking about what type of scissors you recommend for this stroking technique. Uh, ones with two blades that go back and forth. Yeah. Um, really whatever, the silicone thumb thumb. Do you feel like you need any special dry scissors? What's your thought on that? I'm not a fan of swizzle. What are Swivel. The, swizzle. Swizzle scissor. <laughs> yeah, those scissor. Are ones, those ones. Yeah, those scissor, are scissor, scissor. But, uh, scissor. Other than that, as long as the scissor's um, sharp and uh, comfortable in your hand, I prefer shoulder scissor. But uh, again, that's because of my smaller hands and something that can be close to the head. So I don't need a long blade to possibly hit the head. So basically, say you kind of have the whole shape in now because everything is brought back. So what happens now? Do you still think of like the refining stages still, like we do in precision cutting? For sure, yep. Still going to work on the inside a little bit and still yet to um, get this outside. I, mean, I get to decide do I keep the outside very skinny or do I go in there and firm it up? And in this situation, I'm going to put a little combination of it. In this back area, I'm going to firm this back area, but I'm going to leave this front in this kind of longer, softer look. And you can see already as far as I'm getting that over direction, that happens. Yeah. So you've got that slight asymmetry. Yeah. So let's yeah, let's let's tune in for a few minutes and watch you really get into the cut. So I'm gonna go into the inside now. On in the inside I'm gonna choose to use no thumbing. So generally work with the thumb in the hole. So I'm gonna take the thumb on the hole, index finger in that same spot, pinch here, up with the ring finger, down with the ring finger, up it opens, down it closes. And what's the difference or benefit of doing that? Um more so just a, a different option. Um and it's so kind of a um say it's free, I'm, loose, kind of. This is extremely loose. This yeah. one is extremely loose. It's not as uh, um, exact and it's per with intent and purpose to keep it very um, loose there. Thanks to everyone that just shared. Francesca McCowan, thank you very much for sharing. We always ask everyone to share. That's how we get to, you know, spread this incredible education around. So, you know, you said this is a little different from stroking. You have a different name for it. Yeah, this, this being no thumb. So, no thumb. Yep. So you took your thumb out literally and you've got it in two fingers and it allows it to kind of just wiggle a bit more freely. And this is removing weight inside the shape that you just created by overdirecting everything back to one spot and stroking. And now you're kind of contextualizing, removing weight. What's your terminology? I'm sure you got your own. Uh, yeah, just basically putting space into the hair. Putting some space. Yeah, because everything looks very solid on the inside. Because um, I only work on the outside, so now it's uh, the interior. So is that a normal process for you? Kind of put, so again, like in the phase, you put the shape in, using stroking, which is very soft on the last two or three inches. Now you're coming on the inside and getting more internal. How close do you get? I know some people say, go for it, go right to the root. What are your thoughts with that? I get pretty close to it. And that's one thing I like about it. It does get quite tighter with intent and purpose. So it really kind of diffuses and spreads itself with so many different uh, um, layers and dimensions, and I hate to use the word layers, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. Malcolm Dunn says, finally someone not using a blowtorch or an axe. You'll never see anyone using a blowtorch or an axe on HP Live. We love diversity, but we love craftsmanship. And unfortunately, I don't think that those tools qualify in the craft category. Yeah, but the craft so. has so many different variables, and I think one of the variables is Ira. You know, he's kind of created his own variation of everything. And we were talking a little bit about your story before, so you know, as a kid, you, you saw this, that the hairdresser was successful, and you'd already been kind of cutting hair. So how did you actually become a professional? Um, 
of course, went to school then. I was very fortunate to assist in a salon in Michigan that was uh, owned by uh, a Red Kid educator, he and his wife, and he was a, a two-time Canadian Men's Barber of the Year. Um, and then with that, he was also very open-minded, so I had to watch the Rust tapes back then. What, Rust? Uh, Irvine, have you ever met Irvine Rust? Yeah, I did. Yeah. He was yeah. one of my first inspirations when I was about 16. My uncle had some videos, and I got to saw Irvine Rust, and then I saw him live on stage when I was 18, and he was dressed nice, he had a black suit on, but he spoke the truth, and he wasn't afraid to curse and yeah. say, you know, take some more weight out, that looked like shit, and, you know, he was just like an interesting guy, and it just changed my perception of what a hairdresser could be, as opposed to like, you know, Mr. Alexander or something, back combing hair, and it was all about cutting. The rust way was pretty yeah. cool. And at that point, I was a young kid, and yeah. I always liked the textured looks. Yep. Um, I wasn't, even though Sassoon was around, I wasn't really a Sassoon clean. Yeah, and you never worked. You never really worked that way. And you just kind of kept developing. Thanks for the flags, and uh, hey, Nick Guinness. Yeah, my best friend is watching from New York, my buddy from kindergarten all the way through. Patrick McIver, our old friend, is watching. Yeah, he says, nice. what's up, Ira? Patrick. Lots of love coming in, love from Russ. Ira is cool people, love that he talks through the whole process. All right, let's get into your process, man. Take it away. Cool, so now I'm working even a lower elevation and even more of a tighter kind of a situation here. I'm kind of just taking the that bottom edge out so I can get more into the length itself, you know, the perimeter line. So I'm saying much smaller, much lower, so I can actually take that length off. You can see there's my guide right behind it. Hint and still on the finger, closing still on the way out. So still exact, all the same mechanics, just a tighter, smaller situation, just to make sure I can get a really tight line in there. And that way I can still decide if I want to go through and blunt the line or keep it more edge softer and edged like this too. So Ira, in the salon, because I know you guys have a really cool salon here, are you, guys, are you still, is it functioning as a salon or is it just a testing ground for the Cote product line? So what happens here every day? It's cool because it's both. Um, we do all of our research and development here. Um, and it's quite quite efficient, quite functional, but we also do have, um, in that factor of having a research development, we still are tending to our clients here as well. So it is multifunctional. So it's some of the fun. questions that always come in, number one, you know, how long do you take for a haircut like this? How do you book something like this since you work in such a unique way? I'm a very slow hairdresser. Mm -hmm. um, Me too. <laughs> so, and I don't, I'm guilty, don't really rush for too many people. So um, I generally, honestly, to book, I book an hour and a half for a haircut. So, um, Luxury. I, I do that because of the fact that I don't want anyone to wait for me um, as much as possible, at least. Um, and so I go through and book a little bit longer time. Um, my clients are all, they know that and they're aware of it straight away, so they fortunately accept me being me. And what are you charging for a haircut these days? $100 is all for Nice, nice. Um, you know, what I've noticed, again, doing all these HP Lives and talking to so many different people, it seems to be a trend to like longer or slower hair cutting in a good way. Like people are trying to like push the value of the experience, charge a little bit more. I'm seeing it a little. I mean, things like that, maybe they'll never go mass, but I'm hearing a lot from the same people, you know? At one point we used to hear a lot of people saying, I'm coming up with a method where I could work in 15 minutes so I could do four or five people an hour. And it was, you know, for lack of a better word, French inspired, mm -hmm. which could be a very beautiful thing. But I've seen a change. I've seen a lot of people taking a lot more time. I think it's maybe a reflection of what we've seen with creative color, you know? Clients are getting used to, in a way, spending more time in the salon for creative color. So now as cutters, we have to kind of make sure that we're doing that too. And yeah. if, if everyone's doing creative color in ways that they haven't done it before, and we're cutting exactly the same way, we're gonna kind of miss the boat. Don't miss the boat. Check out something new. Again, lots of people are joining almost every minute, Ira. So walk us through this technique right from the beginning. So things from the beginning, think of the head as a clock, think of the nose as 12 o'clock. The right ear is 3 o'clock, back vertebrae 6 o'clock, left ear 9 o'clock. So a clock around the head. I got it now. I'm good. 12, all the way back around to 12. Cheers. And that's how you decide where you're going to over direct to. Yep, to build so whatever the time I cut at, I know it's going to be short as this. If I cut everything at 6 o'clock, it's going to be short as 6. The longer towards 12. If I cut everything at 12, it's going to be short as 12. The longer towards 6. No matter what you call that. Yeah. A uh, round shape or a mullet, no matter what you call it, it's going to do that. Um, in this situation, I'm cutting everything at 4.30, so it becomes shorter at 4.30, longer towards 12 on the 3 o'clock side, and even longer towards 12 on the 9 o'clock side, and had further time travel. I'm loving these flags. Right. So, uh, Missy's hair was basically kind of one length when we started. Ira put this guideline back in here. 
at, as you said, 4.30, which is a great way of describing it, overdirected everything to that stationary point, and then used this kind of stroking technique that I, I love. I, I played with it a lot myself, um, you know, in the, in the early 2000s when I was first exposed to it. I think it's incredible. Um, then started to really kind of work a lot more dry hair. And you, you, you definitely recommend this technique for dry hair? Personally, especially if you're newer to it, um, the scissor won't be so sharp on the dry hair. Um, this, the hair won't be so slippery in your fingers. Um, and you'll have so much more control with dry hair. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, these kind of techniques on wet hair, the hair sticks together, obviously, because it's wet. Mm -hmm. And you can take out so much more weight without realizing it. Yeah, Where, uh, when it's dry, what you see is what you get, right? And yeah. it's easier to control. That, sure. Yeah, excellent. So, and now, basically, kind of going back through, yeah. and, and what's the purpose now? The purpose of that is for me to kind of firm up that line at the bottom, because the fact that I still have everything elevated above noon, or sorry, at below noon, but was still elevated out. So this is kind of putting in your outline. A little bit. We're still I can decide if it's going to see, as I'm watching this, I can decide, do I, do I want to keep that softer edge on there? Or do I want to firm it up? Do I want to open up and expose some of this disconnection, this bottom area? Um, so it's all up to me then at that point. And first I just wanted to get a little bit more weight in there. So I lowered my elevation, even it closer to almost, uh, I don't have a time zone, but closer to the body. Right. Sunset. <laughs> and you, you're not necessarily Close looking. Close to the biggest bedtime. Yeah, Wait, I got my. You're not really looking for a blunt outline at all here. There was a question is it supposed to look solid? You're, you're kind of diffusing. It's an, it's an option. option. Yep. Awesome. Thanks everyone for sharing. People all over the world watching and sharing. That's what it's all about. That's where our community is. Hairdressers kind of sharing with other hairdressers. And, and keep it an open mind because there's so many different ways to do things. You know, this is my 26 years as a hairdresser, and I think if I still did everything the same way I did in my first five years, I would not be doing hair anymore. You know, I don't want to be stunted. I want to keep continuing to grow as long as I respect the craft. We're never looking for a gimmick or an easy way out. And watching this, this isn't easy. You know, I know because it's simple, but it's not easy. And this isn't just some trick. There's some craftsmanship. Okay, so you're making Missy see about. Tell us why. Uh, I, even though I'm short, I want to look at this right at eye level. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, for the most part, even though we being short, generally it's going to be right at my eye level. So I want to kind of be right at eye level, um, so that way I can see this line, see this outline I'm going to play with. I'm going to decide to firm up this outline a little bit. I'm going to refer it up to point cutting. So using kind of traditional point cutting, mm -hmm. well, what now is traditional, it used to be pretty innovative, right. but now something that, you know, is kind of a staple of hair cutting and putting in a bit of an outline. Yep. Now, will you take this all the way around to the front? I'm going to probably leave the front even softer. So not necessarily, I'm going to keep this probably just the back area for that firm. So I have more of a firmer back area, um, but more of a softer front side. Amber Ballman is uh, saying if you're ever in Minneapolis and you need a model, she's down. She loves the cut. Thank you, a lot of love coming in. He's such a nice guy. I don't know if that means me or you. Probably you. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you, you know, here's, a, here's an interesting one. That probably the most renowned dry hair cutter was a man named John Sahag. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Yes. Uh, do you ever, have you ever connected with that technique? I, I never got to meet him. I don't know exactly their technique, but right. interesting, everything that I hear that he subscribe to and says mm -hmm. is the same kind of stuff that I subscribe to and that I believe in. So yeah. it's uh, very yeah. interesting how that worked out. It's about the tapering decades. the ends with a small pair of scissors. Everything was done from the underneath. Yeah. I got exposed to it a little bit because a friend of mine who was an assistant with me at Sassoon, uh, only for about six weeks, and then he was like, I don't like this method at all. And he left Sassoon and he became an assistant at Sahag. Mm -hmm. And he trained right under John, he was his personal assistant. His name was Davide. Okay. We were friends for years and he used to show me some of the techniques. And uh, it was awesome. It was really awesome. And I, I, I definitely see some similarities here. Cool. It, they used to call it sculpting, you okay. know, which a lot of hair cutting people call sculpting. But it, it, when you work this way, it really is sculpting, you know. You're not just putting in lines and corners. You're literally cheat, cheat, uh, treating the hair like a fabric and kind of cutting away what you don't need. Yeah. Lots of love coming in. So uh, tell us about the angle here. Lots of people saying they love how severe it is, the, the, the steepness of the angle. So since I stayed at one spot, you're going to have a very extreme angle then. If I had rotated, say, if, say That's a good lesson. One, yeah, so everything's coming back to this very section one. So because of that, it's quite that way, you can see it. than yeah. this angle. So it's shortest right there. Um, where so the center is offset right here. Correct. Because yeah. here's a vertebrae right here, 
and I'm right over here. So I just switched over just a, like an hour and a half before basically. Um, and since everything's brought to that same spot, that's why it's much more extreme in its angle. Um, say if I brought to one, brought two back to one and brought three back to two and brought four back to three, then it would be so much softer. Um, I bring everything back to section one, so it's quite extreme and quite graphic in that manner. So Ira, how are you guys at Cote Hair, you know, besides distributing product and creating tools, how are you trying to bring this education to hairdressers? Is that a part of the brand? Is it, it certainly you know, is. some yeah. people that carry the product or want to take education, is it part of your mission to share this education? Yes, it is, and we have a couple different ways that we do that. One, we, hold, we host hands-on classes here. There are two-day hands-on classes that we do here. Um, along with that, we also do, um, we went through and filmed and edited, my partner Butch and I went through and filmed and edited um, a bunch of our tricks of the trades is what we call them. The tricks of the trades, those were those great little short videos. Yeah, yeah. little four or five minute videos. And uh, um, so those are the ways that we cut hair basically, the way that we believe to cut hair basically. Right. And uh, so those are videos that we have on our website at cotehair.com and they're all available about there free 24-7. Uh, so a, that's also an option and of course we're traveling all over the place uh, with people who are distributors and things of that matter. Are you doing in salon education if a salon is working with your brand? Is that for part sure. of yep. product knowledge as well as technique? Yes, sir. Yeah. And how, you know, how hands-on are you? I know obviously the brand's owned by Butch, he's a hairdresser. You're, uh, are you technically a partner in the brand? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Yes, sir. That kinda, I wasn't sure, but that's amazing. We so got, you're a partner. We got Brent Golden, our, our other partner over here. Hey it's Brent, how are you buddy? Good it's to see you, it's been a while. Thanks for the amazing space. Oh, right on, right on. We're having a great time here sharing this uh, genius's ideas here. It's like Hobbit magic going on right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you sometimes stop to eat, to eat to eat snacks yeah, yeah. in between. Yeah. Right. Hobbits have to eat a lot. <laughs> second, second. All right, second looks like we're getting into the front here. Oh, okay, Kelly didn't like that joke. No. <laughs> oh no, I was so, hi, just Anna. noticing. Our buddy Anna Pacito just joined. Hi Anna. Anna and Ira. Diana. So I did decide when I'm working uh, because of humans have shoulders, um, I, or most of them, I had to decide whether or not to, um, I wanted to get the shoulder out of the way. So if I'm working more of a round shape or a square shape, I may turn the head forward to cut that line. But being I'm working more of a triangular line, shoulder to the back, long towards the front, I will then generally bring the front to the back. So that way I emphasize still getting that front to the back, and that way I can make that line solid from the back side, so therefore, if my body's back here and I'm turning everything to the back, the higher probability to be longer towards the front. Ira, Linda Schnott wants to know, what was the website you talked about if she wants to go and see the videos? Sure, it's Cote, right here. It's Cotehair.com. C-O-T-E hair.com. Yeah, we can we can put that in the comments later. I can actually do it right now, and then anybody that wants to uh, click on it can head over there and check out the products, the tools, and the education, which is really what we're all about, right, Aaron? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. yeah. So again, I can see that line in there, so it makes it visual and easy for me to go ahead and work just straight down from that. All right, Missy, you got some big compliments here. This model is Sorry. gorgeous and wears this style perfectly. What do you think about that? Thank you. You feeling good? You feeling lighter? I am, actually. Right on. And you work here, so you work in, in guest uh, like services, client services. Awesome. How long have you been doing that? I'm going to have you look right at your eye. Three months. Three months. Right on. Right on. So a lot of movement in the head. So you're not a hairdresser that believes keep the head in just one position. I've, I used to be. I've, I'm changing a lot on that to really uh, maximize my um, shapes on things. I'm working more lines than what I used to do as well, so all that becomes so much more important. Um, and then uh, being influenced, um, say, by Ali on as much as possible lately, honestly, um, and seeing on how they move the head so much. I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes things so much more simple. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I've become you know, more of a head for mover. About the first 15 years of, of cutting hair, I really believed keeping the head in the most natural position worked the best. And then I heard a very simple, one of these 15 minute hair cutters, French hair cutters who did beautiful work. And he said, you push the head away from you when you want to build weight and you bring the head towards you when you want to remove weight. And it was just like a lightning bolt that hit me in the head. And ever since then, it just naturally happens and it works so incredibly. You know, when I'm trying to build weight, I just move the head away from me. I'm trying to remove weight, I bring the head towards me and everything just falls into place. I need to get re-positioned uh, here. Re-positioned. Yes. Sorry. What's the best yeah. position? I'm going to reset right here. Awesome. So I'm basically at this point just 
finishing up the line. And then I'll expand that uh, the root there a little bit more. Lots of love coming in for your cut. Our, our good buddy Jeremy Hickson's here. Jeremy, oh, Jeremy. On, but I'm in Las Vegas. So and it has been so hot, me. Jeremy. It's been 120 degrees for about 10 days between Palm Springs and Las Vegas. So me and Ira, we're just throwing out in t-shirts. Right, brother? Sure. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Ira, a question from Danielle Green, one of our local hairdressers who's a great friend. Um, do, you, do you cut wigs? Do you ever cut wigs? No. No, never. No. I mean, I have before, but I don't in any kind of a regular scenario. Here's a question coming in from Stacy White. Uh, she absolutely loves this. Do you cut African-American hair? Yes. You sure do, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, uh, I mean, hair's hair, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it comes in. I, you know, I mean, since, it's, since we brought it up, I mean, hair is probably one of the only industries that's still pretty segregated. There are plenty of people that just do white hair and plenty of people that just do black hair. For sure. That's definitely not a good thing, and it's not moving us forward as an industry, but it's kind of the way that it is, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I don't subscribe to There's also people that, that only hair. cut hair, and there's people that only color hair as right. well. Yep. And I do both as far as an in salon and uh, with my clients. I'm a very simple hair color. I don't do I don't hair paint. I don't do rainbows. I don't do uh, those. I don't braid hair. I don't do those things. I basically just primarily cut hair and color hair. But um, in salon, so my color is very 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 basic. Is there anything that you're doing, you know, with the cut to give it that kind of beautiful bend forward? Is there anything about the way the stroking yeah. was done? Yeah, it's kind of really getting that like little, obviously it breaks on the shoulder, but you can see the hair wants to move that way. And that's coming from that movement that was putting, put into it in the first place. By having that over direction in there, it makes it want to swing forward is number one. And then again, by again putting that space in there through the technique of stroking, it puts that space in there where the hairs can then flow and bend also as well. We do have a question from Melissa Matthews. Um, you know, she's asking, you know, are there any products in your line that you recommend for women with thinning hair? Is there anything in particular? Yeah, so that women want to spray their hair. All right. So well, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't plan that. So we have our um, sea style spray. Our sea style spray it actually helps thicken up the fat hair strands um, and reboot like I blue dry hair smooth and straight. Um, so the hair's being told to lay down and be very small. Sit down. And okay. So I want to. Uh, uh, Expand the hair a little bit more, so the C style is very often well giving me some space in the hair, or not space, but some volume. In the so C style is that something that's like salt infused, or yes, sir. Yeah. Um, but the friendly thing about this is nice is that when most C style sprays are so dry and chalky, you can't really. Not that I round brush a whole lot, but a lot of clients do. Um, and if you spray a lot of other C style sprays in the hair and then round brush with it, you need to make your client call you, like sign a contract and call you Christian Gray because you'd be yanking their hair all the time. Mm -hmm. So dry and chalky. This one's quite clean, so you have the option to yank and pull the hair in the manner that they like it. So Butch just walked me through the back end here, where you guys actually do all your own fulfillment distribution and even bottling. So you guys say it's like a, a one-stop shop for creative hair, from having a testing ground, an area to do clients, packaging of product, creation of tools. Pretty awesome. Got yeah. Mr. Frank Golden here. Yeah. Going on. See you, man. It's been a long time. The hair is a little bit brighter since the last time. Yeah, he looks way better that way. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So, what are you guys up to here? What have you done here? We're just kind of happy organic. Yeah. We know how thoughts leave uh, cooled by swamp coolers, so they don't cost a lot. Yeah, I, as I walked through the, the, the fulfillment area, I was like, it's not hot in here. I didn't even ask Butch, but I'm like, bum, these guys are air conditioning yeah, the you know, warehouse. You know, li living in Vegas, you really learn how to uh, conserve energy, conserve water. So, you know, that's part of like the building with the whole makeup. It's like, let's be energy efficient. We've got a course to the here. And so that's even like one of the top of the packaging. When these guys started it, they wanted square packaging. It's not just functional. But it also takes up 27% less space than ground line. Right. So when you ship, you're taking up 27% less space. Right. So all those types of sustainability. So that's a big part of the brand, sustainability. Oh, yeah. Awesome. 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 Um, where our, our products are manufactured as well, it's about 90% solar powered now. 
So, you know, these are just things that people should be doing. Yeah. It's kind of like a check. It should almost become the standard now, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It, you know, nobody awesome. tests on animals. There's no animal by product. Either. Yeah. Bella. It's a vegan friendly product. Bella. Bella. Yeah, yeah. It's vegan friendly. Bella. Bella, come <laughs> here. Because, you know, we like, we like to bring. Uh, come here, Bella. Come on. Hey, girl. Come on, Bella. She's a beauty. Yeah, we like to bring dogs to work. You She's know, a that beauty. Kind of so, girl. we kind of have a little saying around here. We think, yeah. we think our pet should be in our laps. So Right on, right on. So, vegan friendly, sustainability, that's awesome. I have one more question for you. So, you know, basically, um, what, what did you see in these guys that made you think, I want, I want them to have a product line? Like, there's so many people out there that were like, wow, if somebody would help me have a product line, what, what would you say to them? You know, what, the, what kind of message should they put out to be discovered? Well, I think first off, I'll tell you, I know that's fun. I mean, he's a good guy. He's fun to hang around. Nice, talented people, right? Yeah, yeah, and then, and then you get to the talent. You know, yeah. because if you're talented and you're not fun and you're not easy going, then it gets a little old. Right. These guys have a ton of talent. They're fun. Everybody likes them. I've always liked hanging around them. And it's just a lot of, it's, it's great to be with them. And then you look at their talent and what they can do and how they relate to people. You start to look at those things, it's like, they're really good at what they do. And they're really good people. They're going to make it. Just keep doing the right thing, being good to people, being yourselves. You know, not trying to be someone else, and you know, like I said, thoughts lead to things. That's great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks for stepping in. Thanks Thank for you. providing this awesome Thank space. You. Let's get back to Iris and work through this hair. Yes, yeah, so I'm sorted as far as the haircut goes and uh, um, everything of that matter. Now I'm just putting a little bit more of a softer edge to itself um, the fact that I did blow dry and kind of dry, so it's got that dry kind of more static edge. I guess. I've got a few questions about the iron. Tell us a little bit about the iron that you're using and so any, any tips. The iron is very friendly for a couple different reasons. I think I like about the most is that the uh, titanium floating plates is super smooth on the hair. Uh, floating plates are, are a must nowadays yeah, in flat think. irons, aren't they? Because yes. without the floating plates, you get lines. Yep. Yeah, I remember the first days when they came out, you used to clamp it and put a line in the hair. But a floating plate, guys, literally means that it floats in there, it moves. So you really don't get any lines and you can use tension. So that's a must, isn't yeah. it? And then uh, this nice rounded edge is very nice for clients, so that they can get you know, those edges in the front if they need a little bit more. So also, coming to a point there, you can get closer, yeah. yeah. And the slight little curve on this guy here makes it to where they get the back here a lot easier as well. Our buddy Jeremy Hicksy. Jerry, we're, uh, Jeremy, we're in Las Vegas at the Cote. It's not just the salon, they have a salon, they have a warehouse here, they've got this incredible photo studio. Um, it's here in Las Vegas, Jeremy, but we'll be back in New York tomorrow. But for about a day, and then I go to Chicago, and then I go to Idaho. And then we're and back here to back to Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them busy. Awesome. So, so we're kind of closing in on the finish now. Yeah, for sure. Do you think you'll need to do any more cutting, or you're like visually, you're like, this is where it needs to be? I think I'm in pretty happy with it overall. Awesome. Awesome. It's looking beautiful. Gorgeous model with gorgeous hair makes it easy, doesn't it? Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. So we have a question that's come up a few times through here. This one comes in from uh, Marie Germain Cardinal. She says, wouldn't you get the same effect if you used a straight razor? And I, I can speak to that a little bit, but I would like to hear your, your uh, thoughts. You could get the same effect using anything. Right. A broken yes. piece of glass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you could use the same effect using anything. It's the hairdresser, not the tool. In that manner. In that um, manner, yeah. But because uh, uh, again, the technique is there. Um, so just depending on, uh, I look at it that in this situation, I choose the vehicle of stroke. The section of the roads, right. and the vehicle I chose to drive those roads is the technique of stroke. Excellent. Or the vehicle of stroke, and I could have, again, yes, used a razor, I could use flickers, I could... The use destination is just a little I'm different, though. Shoes. Use a different vehicle, you end up parking maybe in a different place, yeah. you know? You might end up in the same destination, but you park in someplace different, and different tools take us to slightly different places. But of course, it's all about the user, you mm -hmm. know? It's all about how you feel at that moment. So great question, and yes, we do love straight razoring. For those of you out there that love razoring, you can watch, we've got plenty of videos with myself and Lee Claps and other great razor cutters. We do these two, three, four, five times a week. And the main thing we're trying to deliver is diversity. Diversity within the craft and talent and, and a higher level, elevating the craft is what it's all about. And I, that's one of the reasons why I've always respected Ira because not only has he created his own method and approach, his own language, all kinds of incredible things, and that's about elevating the craft. So it looks like coming in and put your finishing touches on here. Can I take the gown off? Sure, please. Yeah. Like this. You have something on underneath here, right? Never. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is Vegas. I have rules. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just going to 
just going through working hybrid uh, whip and some of our quinoa smoothing oil in there. Just really smooth and moisturize that hair a little bit more. Get more of a clean finish at the edges. So as Ira finishes up, I want to thank everyone for watching. I think we've had a lot, probably several, several thousand, 10 to 15,000 live viewers over this uh, hour and a half that we spent here with Ira. Thank you all for supporting Hairbrain and what we do. Um, we'll see you in. We'll see you at Teaching in, in Las Vegas on July 10th. Ira's going to be on stage with some of the, his fellow uh, amazing hairdressers, Sharon Blaine, Paul Stafford, Tracy Sakasich, Chelsea Von James. Uh, help me remember some more. There's so many, it's hard to keep track. Hi, yeah. Sal Maziri, our great friend who we were with last week, and tons more. Head over to hairbrain.pro to learn more about teaching and our tools. Head over to cote.com to learn about this incredible brand that Butch and Brent and I are creating. And let's get a final look here, a little 360. That's always nice. Do you want to stand up for us, All right, Ira, come on. Big hugs, big love to this guy, big hops. Peace out to the Hairbrain community, global massive. Yeah.